Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this. Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I almost forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya. What is happening fourth grade? Welcome to the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. This is video number 27. So I'm hoping that you have the worksheet that you need for today. If you're like, Miss McCarthy, what worksheet are you talking about? Well, that's a great question. If you check the link below or somewhere around this video, there should be a link that you can click. That link will take you to my website where you can then download the worksheet that you need for this video along with all the other worksheets in the entire fourth grade series. So now that you have your worksheet, what I want you to do is pause the video, solve number one and number two on your own. I want you to throw down your best as if these two questions were on the test and then come on back to check your work. Welcome back, fourth grade. All right, so first things first, let's identify that question type. I'm seeing a lot of answers here, more than four answers, which means that this is going to be a what kind of question? A multi-select. Now let's read it, mark up our text, and make sure this question makes sense. Select all the shapes. So we're going to try all, look at all, analyze all, solve all, whatever we need to do. Select all the shapes that always contain a right angle. And we know that a right angle you see is a square corner or 90 degrees. Kind of looks a little obtuse from your angle, but let's imagine that it is a right angle. I'm trying to make it really good and right for you. So here's the shapes right there. We have to select the ones that always contain a right angle. So an acute triangle has three acute angles. It's so acute, this is the little angle sign. If it has three acute angles, there isn't any room for there to be a right angle, right? So let's eliminate that one. An obtuse triangle has one obtuse angle. One obtuse angle. If it has one obtuse angle, then it is obtuse. So here's what an obtuse angle looks like, right? It's wider than a right angle. And the only way to have an obtuse angle or an obtuse triangle is to have the other two angles be acute. Once that obtuse angle makes that angle open wide, the only other option is for two acute angles. Therefore, it will not have any what kind of angles? It won't have any right angles. Let's eliminate that. A right triangle must have one right angle like this. If this is a right angle, boom. And if there is a right angle, the only other option is to have two other acute angles, but there is a right angle inside of a right triangle. That's why it's called a right triangle. So we can definitely mark C, but we are not finished. No, no, no. We need to make sure that the other ones do too. A square 
Well, here's a picture of a square, or at least my best picture. That's actually a pretty good square right there. All right, myself. <laughs> um, and a square, the attributes of a square, or the most important attributes are that it has four right angles and four equal sides. Because a square contains four right angles, it definitely contains a right angle. We can mark D for square. A parallelogram. Parallelogram, usually when we think about a parallelogram, we have this kind of a thing in mind. It kind of looks like a long rectangle that's been pushed over a little bit. The defining attribute of a parallelogram is that it has two pairs of parallel sides. So to find the parallel sides, we check out the bottom and top. Those are parallel on a parallelogram. And then side to side, those are parallel, even if they're tilted like this. It means that they could go on and on and never ever cross. This is usually what we think about for a parallelogram, but technically a square is a type of parallelogram because it does have two pairs. Same thing with a trapezoid. A trapezoid could look like this, right? Where it ha a trapezoid has one pair of parallel sides and it could have right angles, but it does not have to have, it does not always have to have a right angle. And a rhombus needs four equal sides. The defining attribute is not that it must have a right angle. It's kind of similar to what we were saying about the parallelogram. Your answers are, did I mark all of them? Yes, C and D are the correct answers for number one. Go ahead and make any adjustments that you need to make. Actually, let me write this too, just so you have this. Trapezoid, one pair of parallel sides. And a rhombus is four equal, or the fancy word would be congruent sides. If you need to make any adjustments to number one, take the time to do that now. You can do that by pausing the video and then just press play when you're ready for number two. But I'm ready, so I'm gonna keep on going. If you need to pause, go ahead. Alrighty. Number two, question type. Well, it looks like we have statements with answer choices. So what kind of question is this? It is an editing task. All right. This says, Drew sorts the shapes based on attributes into two different groups. Okay, that's some fancy words in there. So somebody named Drew sorts shapes based on the attributes or like their um, properties, just how you describe it. Like parallel lines would be an attribute or the types of angles would be the attribute into two different groups. And those two groups are at least one parallel side, that's group one, or no parallel, parallel <laughs> or no parallel sides that would be group two so complete the statements below to determine how to sort the shapes fill in the bubble before the choice that is correct okay in the at least one pair of parallel side i should say at least one pair of parallel sides so i will fix that and same thing up here too at least one pair of parallel sides i will fix that on your paper i will fix that as soon as i'm done recording so hopefully yours will be corrected by the time it's in your hands okay so in this group drew can have at least one pair so there's a shape that has one pair of parallel sides what is that shape a trapezoid, right? When I think of one pair, that would be a trapezoid. And when I think of two pairs of parallel sides, that would be um, a parallelogram. I'm gonna break this down because I'm seeing a lot of quadrilaterals there. I'm just gonna break this down. I have a song on YouTube and on my website. It's the uh, quadrilateral song for a geometry series. And it classifies the quadrilaterals in a very fun way. I had a lot of fun making it. Okay, so first up we've got the quad, the quadrilaterals. It means four sides, four angles. Okay, so if you have something with four sides and four angles, it is a quadrilateral. Just doing this kind of quickly as a review just to help us with this problem. Then what we do next is we can take a look at the parallel sides. So it could have no parallel sides and it would be considered a quadrilateral. Or it could have a one pair of parallel sides, which would be the trapezoid. And a trapezoid, if we remember, the typical trapezoid looks like this. 
and it does have one pair of parallel sides. We call them parallel sides because they never ever cross. We could also classify with two pairs of parallel sides, which was called a parallelogram. Kind of an obvious name. It has the word parallel in it, right? If it has two pairs of parallel sides, it's called a parallelogram. And usually when we think about a parallelogram, it looks like this. I made that really long. So if you check out the bottom and top there, you see that they're parallel. They never ever cross. And the side to side, they never ever cross either. Parallelogram. So to review, you have if you have a shape that has four sides and four angles and no parallel sides, it's called a quadrilateral. If it has one pair of parallel sides, it's called a trapezoid. If it has two pairs of parallel sides, it's called a parallelogram. And then it could be a special kind of parallelogram. Maybe this parallelogram has special angles. Maybe this parallelogram has special sides, okay? And they're special because they're equal, equal sides, equal angles. A parallelogram that has four equal angles is a rectangle. And you might be saying it has four right angles. Yeah. And that's the only way a quadrilateral could be equal is to have those four right angles. It could also be a special kind of parallelogram with equal sides. If so, it's given a special name. If it has four equal sides, it's called a rhombus. Don't be confused if you see the word rhombi. They're just talking about a rhombus, okay? It means more than one rhombus. So, and a rhombus typically looks kind of like a parallelogram, but it looks like a square. It kind of looks like a square that's been pushed over or equal sides. What if you have a quadrilateral that has two pairs of parallel sides, special angles and special sides that is called a square. And the square we know has four right angles and four equal sides, but it also is a parallelogram. Um, quick little mini lesson to help us with this next problem. In the at least one pair of parallel sides group, Drew can have, so Drew can have a square, a square. Well, a square is a type of parallelogram, so therefore it has two pairs of parallel sides, so that would be true. A quadrilateral does not have to have parallel sides. So that makes it wrong and we can move on. Let's try B. A rectangle. Here's our rectangle, which is a type of parallelogram, which has to have two pairs of parallel sides and therefore it has at least one. Yes. A square we already talked about. Yes. A trapezoid must have one pair and a quadrilateral. Oh man, thought we were going to get it but a quadrilateral does not have to have parallel sides to be considered a quadrilateral. All right, a C, a parallelogram. Well, that must have two pairs of parallel sides. Yes. A square, we already said, yes. A rhombus is a type of parallelogram and a parallelogram has two pairs of parallel sides. So yes, a rectangle is a type of parallelogram and a parallelogram must have two pairs of parallel sides. So that would make it at least one. They definitely have one because they have to have two. So this one looks good. Let's check D just to make sure. D, a quad, oh, there we go. We already established that a quadrilateral does not have to have parallel sides. Okay, so the correct answer for the first box would be C. Next one, in the no pair of parallel sides group. Okay. Drew can have an equilateral triangle. A triangle cannot have parallel sides because they all come together. There's no way to make them parallel. So, so this would work. It does not have parallel sides. Scalene triangle does not have parallel sides. A trapezoid must have one pair of parallel sides. Man, so that's what makes it wrong. B, an isosceles triangle. Well, it's a triangle. Oh, let's go back and talk about these. So an equilateral triangle means three equal sides. Scalene means three different sides. And we already talked about a trapezoid. Isosceles, I always think of a pizza. Isosceles a pizza. Because it means that two of the sides are the same. 
And I always think of a slice of pizza. A sassalisa pizza. Um, and it is a triangle, so it's not going to have any parallel sides. So this works. A right triangle, that works. It's a triangle. And a parallelogram has how many pairs of parallel sides? Two, right? So it does not belong in the group. And a cute triangle, it's a triangle. And acute means that it has three acute angles. An obtuse triangle means it has one obtuse angle. It's a triangle, no pairs of parallel sides there. And a hexagon has six sides. Okay, so the, it's not the best hexagon and it, they are not all equal, but here you can see, if I check out the bottom and top, right there in this one, I have at least one pair. So therefore, it cannot be this one. A hexagon makes it wrong. And a, okay, D, a scalene triangle has three different sides, but it is a triangle and therefore it will not have any. So that is true. Isosceles, isosceles a triangle is like a pizza pizza with two equal sides. And it is a triangle, so it will not have any parallel sides. And an equilateral triangle, oh my gosh, three equal sides here. It's a triangle, it will not have any, it is D. All right, so there was a lot of information here. And the thing with geometry is, it's really fun because you can see it, but it's so much vocabulary. But I don't want you to get held back by that, okay? I have other videos out there to help you. I know I went kind of fast through this because it was more about the FSA test prep kind of thing. I wanted to teach you a little bit, but mostly get to the point with the FSA. Um, but I do have plenty of videos to help you to master this vocabulary where you feel confident. If you are struggling, I know that was probably really overwhelming, but, but please let me introduce to you some more videos that can help you. All right, fourth grade. So if you know that you need some more help, please check out the link below to McCarthy Math 155. The 155 stands for 155 daily high energy jam packed video lessons to break down the fourth grade skills. I also have videos for third grade and fifth grade too. Now you do have to become a member in order to see the videos, but I give everybody a free trial who signs up for seven days. Now, if you know that you need some more help with geometry in preparation for the FSA, check out unit 13. The next link that I'd like to point you in the direction of is to the how to pass the math FSA series. This was the first one that I created on YouTube several years ago back when the FSA for fourth grade was on the computer. Well now it's a paper-based test so it looks a little bit different which is why I wanted to revamp create a new series and voila we have the math FSA boot camp. Still the how to pass the math FSA series people have been using it for years with great success so I highly recommend that you check out that link below it'll take you to the same standard that we worked on today. I'd love for you to follow me on my social media platforms. I'm on Instagram and Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy so you can stay in the loop when I release new content. And I'm also on YouTube at McCarthy Math Academy. If you happen to be watching this on YouTube, awesome. If you could take a quick second to smash that like button, that would be super amazing. Not for me, but to support my mission, which is to help make math fun, make it click and make it stick for as many students as possible. So thanks for doing that. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe. That way you're the first to know when I drop a new video. And finally, before we go, I just wanna remind you that you work created for a reason, for a purpose. You are the generation that we have been waiting for. So find your light and shine it bright. Watch out world because we have a whole new generation of world changers who are ready to step it up and make this world a better place. When you have the choice, choose kindness and you always have that choice. And oh my goodness y'all, I cannot wait to see you on the final episode number 28. How are we finished already? Ugh. It's all good. One more coming. I'll see you then.